that me? Or? That was you. Excellent. That's good to know. That's good. <laughs> that pre-recorded. <laughs> no, that was recorded. That was recorded. Yeah, that's excellent. Jason's that's good. Me, that'll be on the outtakes. Yeah, yeah. It's obviously <laughs> dreaming of those mince pies, which I don't don't need at all. No, you no. and me both. Yeah. <laughs> So, hello and welcome to 2020. Yes, it's um, a new decade. It's not a new lineup. It's me and Georgie sitting here. Um, hello again. Uh, Simon's probably um, rushing around doing various oh, post, post-New post Year jobs. It's mad in the office, yes. I think he's down there in a corner rocking himself So we'll, we'll him, invite him back to join us another another when occasion. When it's not so mad. Yes, when yeah. it's a bit calmer. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're, we're sitting here in the sitting room. We're going to chat about what January holds and um, some forthcoming deep dell events and um yeah and just welcome to this whole new decade and this whole new time and this yeah whatever this year brings for us we just hope that um as our new year message said on uh, on our facebook page you know um i hope that 2020 just brings you lots of adventures lots of happiness and uh, most of all uh, lots of time for yourselves um wherever and whenever that might be um course we are open all year and would love to see you if you're coming this way uh, but completely understand that um, that adventures take all shapes and sizes and all forms but hopefully what we talk about now uh, will will encourage you and excite you to come and visit us even in these dark and dismal months of January well there's still plenty to do isn't there is plenty to do that's potentially gonna brighten your brighten your month up brighten your year up um, if anyone's got any New Year's resolutions, come down because there's so much stuff that you can do um, that might coincide with that. Um, a lot of stuff is, a lot of the events that are going on in January are events that have maybe happened at other points of the year, but they'll have a different um, theme to them. For, ex- for example, some of the farmers markets, seasonal produce um, that we'll be seeing now that we wouldn't have been seeing later last year yeah. and things like that. Yeah, so. and there's, the farmers markets are lovely. They're really yeah. nice and you get a really good chance to chat to the uh, to. Uh, to the producers which is a lovely they're always really interesting them. people yeah. I don't know if I've yeah. ever met a boring you know person a producer cheese producers I think are, are some of the most fascinating because they're just fudge producers are my favourite <laughs> yeah but that's if only because you really love the fudge <laughs> I mean, let's face I'm not it. impartial to cheese either actually <laughs> <laughs> so have you got any New Year's resolutions I, I'm not normally one to make New Year's resolutions. I think that you should be able to say, okay, I need to do this more at any point of the year. But having said that, I would like to focus my attention on doing things that I didn't focus on last year. So I would like to um, focus a little bit more on going out and seeing a bit more of the North Norfolk coast. I live in Wales, but I've often, there are so many places that I go and think this is beautiful here. I really should visit here more often. And so, yeah, that's one thing that I would like to do, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a resolution. How about you're you? not going to strike it off a list if it's done. You're just it's no, one of those things you want exactly. to work towards. Exactly. I'll, I'll wake up and go. Where do I fancy going today? Yeah. After work. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've I've made New Year's resolutions in the past and failed dismally within mm. about a 10, 10 minutes of making them. <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to. But I'm going to get back into my running. I, you know, having um, had quite a break in this last few months of the year. Yeah. I want to get make sure I'm back into running. But I've got no set plans to do any more half marathons or marathons. Or anything. You're not planning on. Are you, what about the park run? And things? oh yeah, park runs I love. Yeah. And I love the atmosphere of those. So and of course they continue all the way through the year. So uh, yeah. I, well, I normally go to Blickling because mm-hmm. um, that's my my local one from yeah. home. Um, but um, Holcombe's a, a really lovely yeah. one, and I want to do the new Hunstanton one, which yeah. has not been going for very long okay. along the promenade which looks um or promenade or have you however i'd say it. promenade but i'm yeah. sure there were others that would disagree but it, that looks like it's quite fun and it's that's growing as well so yeah. there's lots of those park runs locally and there's and there's lots more in norwich and stuff yeah. and there's also i've got to this year what i guess it, this is a determination i'm going to do the sheringham park run yeah with the hill of doom near the end the hill um, of doom yeah i think that it's sounds a, like a harry potter <laughs> the hill of size event or something yeah kind of tries to <laughs> climb this final hill after finishing their 5k and just yeah they're, they're Apparently, it, it's the breaker of quite a few people. So, oh, um, but I'm I determined to do that one. But the, the hardest thing for that one is getting up early enough to get there yeah. in time and work out where everything is. Not so, not so much the hill of doom. Just not the so early much the hill start. of doom. Is the early start. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but fantastic. Um, well, you can get um, obviously some information about that on the website. But we've got a couple of park runs. So the Holcomb Park Run is going to be on Saturday, the fourth of January. So is the Hunstanton Promenade. And they're every Saturday run. actually, nine nine a.m. every Saturday. Fantastic. Uh, Okay. There's the odd one, which is different. So when it comes to sort of landing on Christmas and stuff, but okay. on the whole, the park runs are every Saturday. Every Saturday, I didn't Holcomb, know that. Holcomb oh. has a slightly different arrangement due to the fact they have some big events in mm-hmm. the in the 
um, in the park. Yeah. So if you're here kind of over the summer months and stuff, it's well worth just checking Double in check, advance. Yeah. Um, so like when the um, uh, Holcomb Fair is on, they don't have the park run. Yeah. But most most park runs um, happen every Saturday, 9 a.m. Mm. And the immediate local ones are Hunstanton um, at the promenade and um, the, um, the Holcomb, which you meet at the hall. Yeah. Um, other close by ones are Blickling, Sheringham, and then there's two or th uh, I think two or three in Norwich, and there's various others are popping up. But cool. if you're a Park Run member, it's dead easy because you can look up on the website. If you're not a Park Run member, it's free to join, but you do need to register before you run and yeah. get your little barcode. Yeah. And you just go onto the website, fill in the form, get your barcode, and you can use that barcode literally anywhere so in the world. So it's quite then. easy to do. Really easy to cool. do. And you print okay. off your barcode and you can use it literally anywhere in the world. So anywhere there's a park run, take your little barcode and then it gets all registered on your account. Yeah. So you can see all the places you've run and how many times you've run a park run. You can keep a little, sort of little uh, record yeah, it's great. of everything that you've so achieved or cheap. everywhere so that I'll, you've I'll, passed I'll out in the world. I'm going to be doing my 50th, my 50th this year. I've got two more to do. So uh, I'm determined to get to my 50. Tick those boxes. It'd be nice to think, but one guy the other day uh, when I was running, he did. Um, he'd just done his 500th, which is just madness. It's. Uh, yeah, I'm so impressed with that. That's so Goodness good. That's so basically he's earned his mince pies of, of at Christmas. Yeah. 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 Gosh. So. Speaking of mince pies, for people like me that are maybe less into running and more into eating. Yes. Which of the farmers markets would you? Uh, is there one in particular that you well, like? Because we've got a few on. In yeah, January. you had, and like, well, the closest one to here is, of course, the South Creek one. Yeah, the Creek Abbey. Yeah, Creek Abbey. Yeah, and. Um, you know, that's um, got some really nice... I love uh, Creek Abbey, even if place. you're not going for food. There's yeah. so many nice little shops to have a look around. It's set in a really lovely area. Right. Yeah, brilliant. So, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the farmer's market there is nice. And some of you, you'll, you'll see some of our regu reasonably regular suppliers yeah. kind of in there. Um, um, Aylsham's nice. It's got a nice atmosphere and it's in the marketplace, in the yeah, which is owned by the National Trust. So yeah. it's kind of, that's, you know, Pretty. worth seeing anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And a good excuse to go over to that side of the county. Yeah. And then there's various other farmers markets locally. So like Fakenham's is the Fakenham's is in a really convenient fourth, yeah. location, actually. Anyone really that's maybe big, living, it's quite a big market as well. Yeah. So uh, yeah. fourth, uh, that's the fourth Saturday of the month. Yeah. Um, it didn't happen in December, so obviously it's only happened. So yeah, 11 I think months a they, year. I think they probably had some other stuff going on that coincided, so they yeah. couldn't. But yeah, normally they're quite regular. Um, Aylsham and um, Creek Abbey are the first Saturday of the month. Yeah. Um, and um, they happen all the way through the year yeah. so uh, they're definitely on and then um, there's uh, I think Kings Lynn has one as well yeah. um, so there's various farmers markets and well worth kind of heading yeah. to because you get lots of local food and you'll see seafood appearing and then sort of disappearing yeah. depending on the time of year and having said that even if you can't make it for even if you're visiting Norfolk maybe on a weekend where there isn't a farmers market or midweek if there isn't a farmers market there are loads and loads of shops um, and delis that support local producers, shops that sell local produce. So it doesn't have to be a farmer's market. A farmer's market is quite a nice way of, of um, yeah. meeting new suppliers, but it doesn't have to be, does yeah, it? Yeah, remember these guys that are at the farmer's markets produce food all the way through the year. Exactly. So, you know, um, if you don't can't find a, a local farmer's market, then just ask in local shops and stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, I know Deepdale Stores here, the supermarket, yeah, they um, do a they've lot been of local really good produce. at talking to lots of the local producers, so yeah. they get the local chutney and you know yeah. all the veg you know nearly all the veg comes all from the local supplier all of the stuff that we have at the Christmas stuff. market basically yeah. isn't it just splattered all over Norfolk rather yeah. than in one area yeah, yeah. so it's um, there's some really really good stuff and of course what a perfect time in the year to go and walk on a beach because you will There's get no the one beach almost there. yourself. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And let's face it, if you come in summer, you can't walk on a beach here without yeah. hundreds of other people. Whereas yeah. this time of year, you can walk on Braxton Beach, Holcomb Beach, and almost see nobody else, yeah. which is just which is, glorious. It's really convenient, especially if you've got children or if you've got maybe a dog that doesn't like you know it isn't very good with lots of other dogs or lots of other people it's a really convenient time because even if you do focus on an area that is really really popular like Holcomb Beach is really popular for dog walking but if you were to decide to go somewhere to try and avoid other people or animals or whatever then you could easily do that at this time of year yeah. can't you yeah and it's, there's something really special and magical about yeah. Big, you know, big winter skies, yeah. and you know that sort of thing. And and I love it when people go, oh, there's, you know, there's no, you know, you look out in the marshes, there's nothing there. It's just brown. It's like no, 
Stand mm, there for it, yeah. a couple of minutes and you begin to see all of this stuff that's happening from yeah. the thousands of geese going overhead, um, you know, at the beginning They're of the day. They're quite a spectacle, aren't they? Amazing. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, really seekers. worth seeing. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, no, look at me, look at me. <laughs> um, and then, but when you start looking around, you know, in the photos that we re repost every um, every lunchtime um, on, our, uh, on our thing, so, so many of them are, um, are of birds that are being seen by local people visiting. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, it, in all the different bird reserves or just literally standing on the seawall looking yeah. across the marshes there's so much there you just need to kind of and just it's look. so quiet as yeah. well you know if you if you need to get somewhere for a little bit of headspace or you want to go somewhere to just have some time on your own which after but you know potentially i know that for my family being cramped inside a mid terrace with all of my family i could often do with a breather on the seawall <laughs> um, but you know if you need a little bit of space to yourself there's no better place to do yeah. it than some of the places we're surrounded by at the moment yeah yeah no it's a i you know this is a, a sort of slightly weird time january february because it's you know it's 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 very quiet and you yeah. know thing but just think you know the pubs are open the seafood is excellent the skies are huge and this is the perfect time yeah. to take that wander even if it's just down to the far end of the village mm. you can then ju completely justify yeah. eating that massive bowl of mussels by the fire in the pub yeah what more could you want really? well the food and the locations don't get any worse just because no, it's a little exactly. bit colder or we're off season yeah. in fact they actually get better yeah. because you're not fighting with six other people to get a table at your favorite restaurant yeah. so you know if you're looking for an opportunity to try a place that's really really busy and then you've never been able to get into before do it now yeah exactly this is january and february are the times to yeah. do that because before we begin to get back into the season yeah. this is the time to try those pubs that you haven't tried before and to uh, that sort of thing yeah. it's really worth doing yeah. so uh, yeah highly recommend north norfolk coast yeah. this time of year come and visit come and You'll see love us it. it's glorious you will love it so that's kind of what's on now, you know, that sort of thing. Let's talk about stuff that's coming up this year. See, I was we've going got some to great say, dates yeah, in the diary, haven't we? In, in light of um, you know, saying bye bye to 2019, we've got a hell of a lot to say hello to in 2020, yeah, haven't we? So, quite a long list actually in front of me. I'll and only George's, talk about a few of the things. Pushing the list sort of towards <laughs> me. But we've got one that isn't on the list yet because we're just. Um, it's, we're, new. It's, it's new. Yes, yeah. we're this it's, is uh, hot get off listed. the press, people. So, yeah. this is the, uh, the 19th of, um, of January. Um, it's um, going to be a Sunday session in the sitting room nice and with warm. our favourite busker, Zef. He's brilliant. Yeah, the man with the, with the fancy trousers yeah. and uh, he sits on his big bass drum and, yeah. he, uh, and he plays and it's, uh, it, it's great fun. And you, yeah. you, some of you will have seen him um, at the festivals in the past. Um, he played at the Christmas market this year. He's just one of those characters that's great you fun. Only, there's great only value. one Zef. There is only one really, Zef. and that sounds cheesy, but you know, to talk to him, he's really quirky, really interesting, and he's his music is such a medley of different styles and different sounds. Even if you go, okay, well, I'm not really into folk music or I'm not really into jazz music, you'll still love Zef yeah. because it's so listenable, and you'll tap your toe. Yeah. regardless of what music you like and I think it'll work really well in this sitting room actually it'll be, yeah. it'll be nice it'll be sort of you know very chilled and, yeah. yeah I think it'll be and fun. he's really funny to listen yeah. to as well it, yeah. it's as much the you know that for him as his music so when I see him well and I see Georgia Shackleton mm. those are the two people that make me most jealous about the fact that I can't play a musical instrument <laughs> it's just you know because he just he's there he's, he's, you almost want him you almost imagine him playing with a beer bottle sort of sliding on the yeah. guitar and stuff you know yeah. it's that sort of style it's great like it's iconic fun. type yeah, yeah. so that's the yeah. 19th of January so that's our music program kicking off on the 19th of January that is our music program kicking off for 2020 with absolutely. Zephyr here in the sitting room for a Sunday session yeah and, and you then, can come down and stay with us absolutely for that, yeah you? and it's and free to get in if, if you're if you're staying you can stay in the campsite or in the hostel or if you wanted to just come and join us it'll be um It'll probably be a fiver ahead. Um, we have a little bar. Um, I'll probably be behind the bar. Really good local, something. yeah, local, local beers, stuff in the yeah, House, lovely, yeah. yeah, really nice. And um, yeah, just come. It's a very, very chilled Sunday yeah. evening. Friendly people, nice atmosphere. Come yeah. along. Yeah. Then, 
exciting. I'm really looking forward to this. The Katie next Spencer, one. who's 16th playing. Of February. Yeah. Yeah. Katie is just lovely. I did an interview with her at the um, at the festival, which was in our podcast, our festival. Which a lot of people podcast. actually shy away from. So I think it's testament to her that she didn't go podcast. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and she's just such a lovely lass from up north. And um, you know, and it was just great chatting with her yeah. about um, the whole kind of you know being a musician and what inspires her and stuff. Anyway, she's just been uh, nominated um, for an award, uh, Best Album of the Year 2019. Gosh. So Katie, she's really well excited. Done, yeah, gal. good job. So she's, <laughs> she's going to be fantastic. And she's playing on the 16th of February. That's yeah. another, uh, our Sunday session in February. And that will be, will be marvellous. Yeah. It will just be lovely to have her here. Yeah. And it will be great fun listening to her. And I think um, that one, we've already been on sell tickets online and people are booking in for. So, so there's already quite really a lot fun. of interest in that. Yeah, Maybe so. get your name down sooner rather than later for that yeah, then because there's only be so much room in the sitting room if we do decide to have it in here for weather reasons and yeah. stuff so yeah yeah so be good for that. Yeah, so end of March, uh, we have the Deepdale Spring Market and the Deepdale Hooger. The Hooger, yeah. Yeah, I think for me, the Hooger is the kind of essence of Deepdale. Yes. You know, it's about sitting around a fire pit, chatting with people you've never met before or friends that you've made here and, yeah. you know, don't see very often. It's about a bit of live music, but it's about getting out, walking, seeing the local area. It's about meeting local producers because we have all the Norfolk artisans that come for the spring market. And as you, uh, you know, and, and then you know, you are building up the list already of all these um, activity and attraction companies that are going to come and tell people yeah. about what they do. I so. think you hit the nail on the head when you said that the Hooger is the essence of Deepdale because for me, and I might have said it on previous podcasts, Deepdale, the you know backpackers and camping, Dalegate Market, the, the coastal path, this whole area is like my happy place. I come here and I'm not stressed anymore. I love the people that I work with. I love the people that I work for and all of our customers. And the Hooger is like a medley of all of that. So it's just so you're surrounded by positivity and smiles and people are trying new things and and it's 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 all stuff that's quite natural and quite healing so you know none of it is really abrasive and in your face it's just a really really nice opportunity to just take some time but still enjoy yourself yeah yeah no it's a and that's why we have the kind of the, just to explain if you've never been before basically we have a, a smaller version of the of the Christmas market with the spring market in it's about 60 to 70 um, local artisans and producers we say smaller but it's still not small <laughs> it's not, it, really? that's true that's true but it's, it's only two small uh, marquees yeah, rather yeah. than the massive marquees yeah. we have for the Christmas market yeah. but it's a yeah it's a, it's a calmer version let's yes. put it that way it's a much nicer time to come around and speak to uh, producers and learn about what they do yeah. um, you've got much more time to chat with them about the products and about what's inspired them to make 
make them and you know the, the process in which they come up with their amazing Maybe get some chutneys ideas for and yourself. cheese and all yeah. that sort of stuff yeah, yeah. and uh, but also just really just tasty really yeah. really tasty and uh, and um but you can yeah you can have a chat with all of these guys and talk talk through it and then joining them as part of our sort of what we call our hoog fair and you can pronounce it however you like yeah. i've heard it all Higger, exactly hoogie hug a hug i quite like actually well actually but we go i, I hugger, heard really. a danish guy saying he was being interviewed and there someone said to him what is hoogah yeah, I don't think they called it hygge. I think they called it. It doesn't else. directly translate, said, does it? No, because he said he said um, to them, "Look, you could use the word hug. It would be so similar. It's about having inner inner happiness. Okay. So it's whatever your inner happiness is. So your North Norfolk coast hygge mm-hmm. will be quite different to your London hygge. Yeah. So what you go to do in London, the bars you go to, or the place you go to eat, the culture, or the, the culture, and, yeah, and also yeah. that, will be quite different to what yeah. you want to do on the North Norfolk coast. So if yeah. you come up to North Norfolk coast, it might be you know walking, cycling. It might be it might be Dog sitting walking, in a pub. It might be stuff. pretending you're doing all of those and then just going to the pub and enjoying <laughs> seafood. It might be any of those. <laughs> <That's me. laughs> but the idea is that the idea of our hoog fair is that we present you a whole lot of ideas of what you could do. So you could go off on a cycle ride with mm-hmm. one of us. You could go off on a walk uh, with us. You could do some stargazing. You could do any of those. Yeah. But you could also have a chat with margins about their walking holidays and their camping. Yeah. You could talk to the North Wildlife Trust or the RSPB. So you can try things. something new on the weekend or you can plant the seed to try something new Exactly. Later. And put together lots of ideas. So like, you know, we hope the escape room guys are going to come again and yeah. the, with their axe throwing and their escape rooms and that sort of stuff and then the idea is that you can put together all of those things and you can create whatever creates your own hygge yeah so you and the idea is you just you just piece it together you put all the bits together you make up what you want to do what makes you happy yeah and then you can enjoy it while you're up here which is the whole kind of that the reason why i feel it's the sort of the essence of detail is because that's what we all want everybody to do yeah. all the way through the year yeah. they can come and they can come into the information center and we will help them as best as we can to find you know all of the things that they want to be doing locally yeah. that might be steam trains or it might be you know bird the bird watching, watching cycling, or it might be something yeah. or whatever and you can put all of that together so the the nice thing about the the hygge is it's kind of that as you say it's like a sort of um like a, the the, the Oh, it's like a perfume version, if you know what I mean. It's yeah. it's all distilled down, yeah. and uh, you know there. And it, I think that's the lovely thing about it. And uh, you know, some of the well, I think the first year when sitting around the um, around the fires, just chatting to a whole bunch of people I'd never met before, who were just loving the atmosphere, enjoying the live music. I just thought. Yeah, this is why I built it. this place. Yeah. This is this is the was the purpose of this whole oh, whole thing. So uh, I definitely think that is yeah, that's definitely the kind of a, a really lovely weekend. I, it's it's a brilliant chill. time as well. It's a, the last weekend in March, so this year that's going to be falling on the twenty seventh to the twenty ninth of March, um, and it's that time of year when you're maybe starting to prepare for the spring and the summer. You're getting ready. You're coming out of hibernation mode, and you're going to go okay. Now it really is time to stop eating all of this food, and um, it's yeah. It's a brilliant time to um, to just get out, get out and about. Take Definitely worth that one. And lots of bookings already in, so yes. don't leave yeah. it too long if you do fancy coming and join us. But we would love to see you if you fancy coming for Absolutely. that one. So, yeah. and then um, the music program sort of is developing for later in the year. Yeah. Um, we've got a Sunday session in with the Shackleton Trio in June.
and then we've got two lots of outdoor theatre this year. The pantaloons. Yeah, yeah. pantaloons are back for two occasions. Well, this is the third year running, isn't it? Because yep. they came last year and the year before. They've yep. been so popular. And in actual fact, I think that um, our accommodation, so the, the hostel, private family rooms that we've got, and all of our camping pitches, I believe were completely sold out for the days that they were coming. And I don't know if it's just that they've had very good luck and they've been coming on days when the weather's been beautiful, or whether people have gone, oh my God, the pantaloons are at detail, go, go, go. Well, I think it's Probably a mixture, because we had people both. travel a long way to come and we see do. them, it was great. And they They're liked really the atmosphere of the year. I've, I've heard as many adults say, love them, they were so funny, as I have heard children, so yeah. I don't think that it's one of those, oh, we don't have any children, so we'll sit this one out. Yeah. Come along regardless, you'll love it. Yeah. We run a bar. Yeah, so. we run a bar, it's great. <laughs> but also you can bring a picnic, you can come and just enjoy the um, the orchard as it yeah. is. And the, the guys you know, do not expect um, Twelfth Night to be uh, heavy duty. These guys can uh, find the joke in almost anything. <laughs> it's very light-hearted. So if yeah. you're looking for a sort of deep, serious um, Shakespeare, not These them. are not the guys not, for you. Not the pantaloons. No, I think the no. clue is in the name, the loons. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Come and enjoy the, the thing. If, you, if you've not really enjoyed Shakespeare before, then um, then this is the it's way, a great to way to introduce wean yourself you. onto it. Yeah, yeah because they will, they will make it funny. And but they're not just things. doing Shakespeare, are they? No, so they're doing they're Twelfth no. Night, which that's Twelfth Night, that's the one in July. Yeah, so the 17th of July. Um, but they're also doing Sherlock Holmes, which is interesting, because yeah. I've only known them so far with us to do Shakespeare. Um, so I think this is going to be quite interesting to watch what type of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure that that good. will be very yeah. funny. So that, that, those those two are going to be fantastic. And yeah, then, the, the Sherlock Holmes that's on the 22nd of August, but I'm sure that we'll discuss that. You know, we'll, we'll, again we'll come to it later time. on, and we'll hopefully we'll have some more information to give yeah. you then about ticket prices and stuff. But those tickets are, are not included, like, unlike our Sunday sessions. So you do need to check the website and book those tickets in advance, With your booking, or yeah. or on the on the gate. Yeah. Um, so it's not too bad. And if the weather's really inclement, we move them in inside. So we're one of the few venues for the pantaloons where you're guaranteed the evening's going to so go. So there's ahead, no excuse, things. basically. <laughs> yeah, basically. If you're saying that, yes, come along. Yes. I, didn't, I didn't want to be quite that forceful, but that's you know. why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, in case you um, in case you haven't got the dates in your diary you need to put the dates of the Deepdale Festival in your diary yes. that's the 24th to the 27th of September we are nearly sold out our accommodation has almost completely gone so if you've come each year so far and you've really enjoyed it and you think oh that's great I'll book later this year don't book now call you'll be up on a waiting book. list very soon absolutely um, and, and if you've uh, never visited before likewise we've, we've got a lot of people coming this year and um, that weren't able to get in um, for the 2019 festival and um, that are coming this year I'm sure that are gonna absolutely love it yeah. you don't have to stay with us yeah. um, it is convenient for you but you don't have to we've got the buses right on the doorstep um, and you can buy tickets separately to the accommodation but if you do want to stay with us then book now yeah Good plan, good plan. And then just one last date for your diary, um, which um, you need to get in there just so that you know, you're know you preparing. Yeah, in that uh, brand new and 2020 we're still in the festive diary season, that you've so just we can in. talk about the next festive season. Yes. Whereas I know when you know, I, I get told off. We've not reached the cutoff point no, yet. Yeah, no, yeah, we're not, not past Twelfth Night yet. No. So um, it is the Deepdale Christmas Market 2020. It is the 27th to the 29th of November. Um, put in your diary now and then we can not speak about Christmas for a little while yes. um, but uh, just put that in your diary and make sure it's there so that you're, uh, you're, you're booked in we were, we were pretty much full for camping that weekend and, we um, and hostel so if you do want to stay over that weekend make sure you book you yeah. book in but it was it's uh, yeah that is the, the biggest event of the year by yeah. quite some way and, um, at and the I, moment um, I think yeah. the other ones so the festival is definitely catching up yeah, isn't it? yeah, it was, um, yeah Chris has got very close to getting the line up of the festival I know and until but I'm not does, allowed to us, announce it none of us can so, know not even behind the scenes staff can know no, until he's finalized Georgie and I it, probably so. have inklings but we if we mentioned it now yeah, he would he would take us off air he would never let us do another podcast uh, no. again so, so yeah, uh, yeah. we'll yeah. keep our mouths shut <laughs> yeah we, we will let you know on that one but basically if you want dates for any of this stuff just head on to our website at deepdalebackpackers.co.uk you can find all sorts of information there you can find out availability using the booking form you can give us a call have a chat with us whatever you like 
basically all this information is there and we would love to see you for some or all of those events. And we do update our events regularly and we do invite people that are holding events locally to add their own events. You can do that on the web page. Um, so if you're staying with us, for example, in February or later in March, um, keep checking because you never know one week it might look completely different to the next. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a we, we slowly slowly get round to adding all these these events and encouraging other people to do it. So yeah, come come and come and join us at any point. We'd love to see you, and you know we're open all year, so you don't have to come for one of these specific events if you just want to come and and escape the madness of the world. Um, this is a, a nice, quiet, calm corner of the world. A lot uh, of people that book in for just that. one night will very often come down and book for more because it's the type of place that people come to and they go wow, should we stay here for a bit? Yeah. You know, so give us yeah. a go. If you've never tried us before, come and visit. Well, thank you, Georgie. Um, Thanks, Jason. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everybody out there. Yeah. And uh, hope you had a fantastic festive season. And uh, we're really looking forward to seeing you in 2020. Um, We'll be back in February with uh, with more of the Deep Dale podcast. But uh, thanks for listening for this occasion. And um, we hope that uh, if you have made New Year's resolutions that they are going well already. <laughs> and if you haven't made New Year's resolutions that you have uh, just have a happy and a very enjoyable 2020. All the best, guys. Take care. <laughs>